Welcome to World Action and Reaction News, today's news headlines are. A protest was organized outside the Embassy of the United Arab Emirates, UAE, on Sunday afternoon to highlight the anger and frustration that still exists among Indians over incidents of terror and over media reports of terror outfits, including well-known ones like the Lashkari Taiba, LAT being bankrolled by financial institutions that operate out of countries in the Middle East such as the United Arab Emirates. Sunday's protest was organized by the Delhi-based NGO Serve for Humans. Speaking to Ani on the sidelines of the protest outside the UAE Embassy, Harish Makatai, President and Project Development Officer of the NGO, said, We are conducting a peaceful protest against the UAE as newspapers are showing news that Dubai funded Pakistani banks for the 26-11th attack in India. We want India to take immediate and stringent action against the UAE. He further said, terrorism and friendship can't go hand in hand. That has been our nation's policy. All countries are important for us, whether it is China or the UAE. If any country wants to spread terrorism in our country, we won't redeem any relations with them. When told that terror attacks are also taking place in Pakistan, he said, Pakistan is a poor country. From where is it getting the funds to spread terrorism? The government should conduct a probe in this regard. To another question regarding the ongoing trilateral border impasse between India, China and Bhutan in the Doklam region, Mr. Makatai said, we want the government to take necessary steps and boycott Chinese products. The government of India is considering selling up to 25% of its stake Indiana for state-owned companies under the control of the Department of Defense through an initial public offering, a public notice showed. The government has invited proposals for the IPO on Tuesday. The government is looking to sell stakes in Mazagon Dock, Bharat Dynamics, Garden Reach Shipbuilders and Engineers and Mishra to Nigam. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government has been divesting its stake in several public and private companies to meet its RS 725 billion, $11.38 billion, divestment target during the year to March 2018. Goa Chief Minister Manohar Parikar has said his government is prepared to host the next edition of the Defence Expo in the coastal state in 2018. The biennial event, organised by the Defence Ministry, was held at Nakwari Quital village in South Goa last year. The chief minister said though the government is ready to hold the event in the state next year, it has not yet decided whether to make Nakwari Quital as its permanent venue. The Defence Expo 2018 will be in Goa. That is a decision for this edition, which has nothing to do with the other proposal to have a permanent venue, for the event, in Goa, Parikar told reporters yesterday in Kalangut. He said the state government wants to convert the site at Nakwari Quitpal into a permanent venue for hosting such exhibitions, but that would be done only after taking the locals into confidence. The Defence Expo is an exhibition of various defence-related products. It provides a platform to the exhibitors to display their latest technologies and products, and an opportunity to explore slash tap the market and business potential for mutual benefits. The next flight of the Indian Space Research Organization, IRO, S Workhorse, the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, PSLV C-39, rocket is scheduled to be launched within the end of this month, said, Director of the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, K. Sivan. Mr. Sivan was here on Saturday to participate in the Convocation Day function of Sana College of Technology in Salem. Speaking to reporters on the sidelines of the function, he said, ISRO is planning to launch PSLV C-39 rocket by the end of August, which will launch the IRNS-1H satellite into space. In line with the plan for launching the Chandrayaan-2 mission and the GSLV Mark III vehicle, research work is being continued, besides for launching the D-2 rocket. August 6, 1945 was one of the two bloodiest days in human's history. Hiroshima and Nagasaki separated by about 300 kilometers and three days were nuked by the United States in its attempt to end World War II. On August 6, at 8.16 m local time 4.46 m in India America dropped the world's first atom bomb over Hiroshima. Literally, the word Hiroshima means the broad island. 
Hiroshima is situated on the largest island of Japan Honshu. Hiroshima was an important urban center in Japan when the B-29 bomber named the Enola Gay of the U.S. unleashed the Little Boy on it. Little Boy was the nickname of the atom bomb that fell over the city of Hiroshima. As per records, approximately 80,000 people were killed directly by the explosion of the atom bomb. Another 35,000 were injured and maimed for life. By the end of 1945, another estimated 60,000 people lost their lives under the impact of harmful radiations emanating from Little Boy. By the end of 1945, Little Boy had killed more than 1,40,000 people in Hiroshima, which turned into heaps of mangled concrete and metal. U.S. President Donald Trump wants Pakistan to change its policy of supporting militants who have safe haven in the country and are causing great losses, the media reported on Sunday. U.S. National Security Advisor General H.R. McMaster on Saturday defended Trump's strategy on winning the war in Afghanistan by giving unrestricted powers to the U.S. military, and said the president wanted Pakistan to change paradoxical policy of supporting militants in the neighboring country, Don Online reported. U.S. officials often accuse Pakistan of helping militants, a charge Islamabad vehemently denies, but this marks the first time that the allegation has been attributed to Trump. The president has also made clear that we need to see a change in behavior of those in the region, which includes those who are providing safe haven and support bases for the Taliban, Haqtani Network, and others, McMaster said. Banned outfits such as the Taliban and Haqtani Network operate and move freely in parts of Pakistan close to the border of Afghanistan. Kabul has repeatedly blamed Islamabad for violence in the country. This is Pakistan in particular that we want to really see a change in and a reduction of their support for these groups. This is of course, you know, a very paradoxical situation where Pakistan is taking great losses. They have fought very hard against these groups but they've done so really only selectively, he said. According to McMaster, the U.S. president does not want to place restrictions on the military that undermine our ability to win battles in combat. India-born UK economist and politician Meghnad Desai predicted this week that India and China, currently engaged a high-stakes military standoff on the Doklam Plateau near the Sikkim border, could soon come to a full-scale war. Desai a member of the British House of Lords, UK's equivalent of the Rajya Sava, and a known commentator on South Asian affairs, linked the Doklam standoff to events in the South China Sea and predicted that the war would be fought in multiple theatres and would involve the United States, which, Desai said, would be on India's side. A Chinese academic said that China is planning a small-scale military operation to expel Indian troops within two weeks from the Doklam area even as an editorial in state-run Global Times on Saturday accused the Modi government of recklessly pushing New Delhi into war by adopting a hard line towards Beijing. China will not allow the military standoff between China and India in Doklam to last for too long, and there may be a small-scale military operation to expel Indian troops within two weeks. Hu Ziyong, a research fellow at the Institute of International Relations at the Shanghai Academy of Social Sciences, said in an article in Global Times. Hu further wrote that the Chinese side will inform the Indian Foreign Ministry before its operation. However, he did not elaborate on how he had arrived at the two-week period. The government is hopeful that the strategic Chabahar port will be operational by 2018. Union Minister Nitin Gadkari has said. The road, transport, highways, and shipping minister Gadkari is in Tehran today to represent India at the oath taking ceremony of President Hassan Rouhani. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had earlier congratulated Rouhani on his re election as the President of Iran and affirmed India's commitment to strengthen the special relations between the countries. Maintaining its silence on claims by the Chinese government that India has reduced troop levels on the Doklam Plateau where they have been in a standoff with the PLA, the government on Friday said it would not comment on operational details, but continued to affirm that war is not an option despite rising tensions. As far as questions on deployments are concerned, these are operational matters on our side or the other side and would not like to specifically go into them, said Maya spokesperson Gopal Bagley when asked about comments made by a senior Chinese diplomat in Delhi, 
who said India had reduced the number of troops sent in to stop a PLA road construction team on June 16, from about 400 at peak levels, to 48 as of Thursday. Chinese defense firm China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation CASC, has incorporated a number of enhancements to its CAI Hong 4, Rainbow 4, or CH4, unmanned aerial vehicle UAV, that are now fully validated and available as options in its export product portfolio, Jane's has learned during a demonstration in northwest China in late July. The CH4 is a medium altitude long endurance, male, class, strike capable reconnaissance platform that has been developed by the China Academy of Aerospace Aerodynamics, CAAA, and is in service with a number of military forces in Central Asia and the Middle East. According to the latest official specifications provided by CAAA, the CH-4 has a maximum takeoff weight of 1,330 kg and a payload capacity of 345 kg. Glass fiber-based composite materials are used extensively to construct the 8.5 m long main body and 18 m span wings, reducing the overall weight of the air vehicle as well as its radar cross-section (RCS). Deliveries of Crab 155 mm self-propelled howitzers (SPHs) to the Masurian Artillery Regiment (11 MPA) will be completed this month marked by a ceremony on August 31 in the presence of officials from the Ministry of Defense, the unit said on its website. Fourteen crabs were delivered to the regiment by tank transporters on July 31. The 11 MPA will be the first of four squadrons, Dwizjanawi Majolonioi, DMO, to receive its full complement of the crab. Each DMO comprises 24 crabs, three command staff vehicles, eight command post vehicles, six ammunition supply vehicles, and one mobile armament and electronics workshop vehicle. The Crab is a Polish modified SPH based on the South Korean Hanwha Tequin K9 Thunder chassis, the B Systems AS90 Braveheart turret, and a German L5 155mm gun. The M15 Remote Controlled Weapon Station, RCWS, has entered service with the Serbian Armed Forces, Yugo Import representatives have confirmed. The Mehkik D.0.0 developed system has been observed fitted to some of the latest locally designed and built armored vehicles, including the Lazar 3, 8x8, multi-role armored combat vehicle and BOV, 4x4, light armored vehicle. For trials purposes the M15 has also been fitted to the turret of the upgraded M84 as one main battle tank and the Malosh. 4x4, multi-purpose armored vehicle, which is undergoing trials. The M15 RCWS is currently armed with a modernized 12.7mm NSV belt-fed machine gun, MG, which is provided with a box of 180 rounds of ready-use ammunition. Yugo Import is claiming a maximum effective range against aerial targets of up to 1,500m and ground targets of 2,000m with a cyclic rate of fire of more than 600 RDS min. There is the potential for alternative weapons to be installed, such as a smaller caliber 7.62mm MG. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this news. Please share your views in comment box. Please like and share this video. Press subscribe button and bell for auto update to you regarding my channel world action and reaction news, warn.